I'm about to show you the pagination component, and I've actually never used this component before. I just learned it literally about 15 minutes ago. However, that's all it took to learn everything I needed to know about this pagination component because it's so consistent with the rest of Quasar's API. And believe me, believe me, I'm nothing special. It's basically just adding a bit of functionality on top of Quasar's button components and making it really easy to turn it into a paginator. So let's go ahead and have a play with this. First of all, I'll say const current is equal to, make sure I spell const correctly, a ref, and that ref is going to be one because we do need to have a value by default for our paginator. Then I'll come in here and say q-pagination, and then we're going to v-model the current page that we're on. So we'll say current here, and then we want to set a max. We need to have a max so that the paginator knows how many values to show. So let's set that equal to five. And there we go, we've got a paginator. How easy was that? All right, the next is just kind of sugar around that. We can say direction dash links, and that means we get these links so we can easily go left and right. Another thing we can do is say boundary links, and that's going to send us all the way to the right and all the way to the left. And there's some more interesting stuff we'll learn soon about boundaries. Another thing we can do is change the icons for all of these. So let's quickly run through them. Icon dash first is equal to, and we'll say skip underscore previous. So that's just going to change this left icon. We've also got icon last, and this one is skip next. So let's see how that one looks. There we go, we've just changed that icon there. And then the other two we've got is icon previous and icon next, icon previous and icon next, XT. So let's try for previous, fast underscore rewind. And then for next, we're going to say fast underscore forward. So these are just icons that I'm pulling out of the material icon library, but you can use whatever icon library you're using. And there you go, it's that easy to change these icons. Okay, let's get rid of all of those bring us back to a basic example and press on. We can also use an input. So let's say input, and that basically means we get an input in the middle instead. So we can say, for example, three, and it's going to take us to page three. I can come in there and say eight, and that's not going to work because I've only got five pages. So you get the idea. The user can just type it directly in there or press the right and left buttons. That's the input. If you want, you can change the class of that, input dash class, and let's set that equal to blue dash nine, Oh, I probably have to add text here. Text, blue, nine, and that's going to make the text here blue as well. Okay, moving on. What else can we do? Well, let's get more specific about the pages. We'll say max pages is equal to 10 here. And then we can say max dash pages. Sorry, so this is the maximum number of pages that we have. And then this is going to be the max pages that can actually be displayed. So there is a slight difference between these two. Let's make that a six, which means we have a max of 10, but we're only going to display up to six. And now notice we get this little ellipses there, so we can click on there if we want to basically show a few more numbers. And Quasar just handles this really nice by default for us. But I'll show you some other things we can do to make it a little bit more obvious what's going on with the pagination here. We can say boundary dash numbers and set that equal to false. And that means we get that, we get rid of that boundary number at the end there. So let me just bring that back to true. And notice that we get this 10, which is letting us know what the final number is. And when I click on 10, it shows us that the final first number is a one. So if we say boundary numbers is equal to false, it just removes that. So we don't actually know how many numbers there are at the end. And that might be helpful if you're using a backend that actually doesn't know yet how many numbers there are going to be in terms of pages. So if your backend doesn't tell you that, then this boundary numbers false might be a useful value for you to set. Another thing we can do is say ellipses is equal to false. E-L-L-I-P-S-E-S -L -L -E -E is equal to false. And there we go. We don't get those ellipses anymore. It just goes from six straight to 10. So I think that's a little bit confusing. That's not the best UI to me, but it's there if you need it. There's probably other combinations where setting ellipses to false would make a little bit more sense. All right, let's play around a little bit with the styling because that's just about it for the functionality of the component. We can say size is equal to extra large, and then we've got extra small all the way through to extra large. But we'll go back to extra large so that it's easier for you to view. 
another thing we can do is change the styling of the buttons. So basically any of the stylings for buttons is available directly on this component. We can say round in order to round off the edges of those buttons. We can change it to a push button. We can change it to a flat button. There we go, that's flat. I think that's what they use in the Q table component. We can say outline in order to get that nice outline around our selected button. Another thing we can do is change the padding here. So we can say padding is equal to something a lot larger, like 22 pixels. There we go. It looks a little bit weird when you've got round. So let's see what that does. There we go. You can kind of have like much larger buttons if you need to. We can also say unelevated, unelevated. So this basically makes our buttons flat, but then still gives them some color. That's good to know. We can change the color, of course. So let's say the color is equal to indigo. That looks really nice. Another thing we can do is change the active color. So let's set that equal to indigo-9, and then maybe we'll make this a bit more understated by saying indigo-4. And there we go. Kind of differentiates them a little bit more. So that's kind of cool. Another thing we can do is say active text color. Active text color. And then we can set that equal to something like, how about indigo, or maybe just black for the active text color. All right, that doesn't look right. How about indigo-1? There we go. It means that the inside is still an indigo color, so it kind of blends a little bit more into the background. But yeah, that's about it for the Q pagination component. Really simple, a lot of bang for your buck. I love this one, even though I just learned it 15 minutes ago. But it was a lot of fun to learn and a lot of fun to share with you. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next video.